One of the challenges we have as clinicians is separating out inhibition versus strengthening of the glutes. So the bridge test allows us to separate these out nicely and serves as a great teaching tool for our patients. For this test, we can have your patient lie supine with the knees up, hands together, straight up towards the ceiling for me, okay, and feet stay together. Our instructions are simply go ahead and lift your hips up into a bridge position. Great. What do you feel working? Glutes and core. Great. So we should see folks activate properly through the hips. We started off in a neutral lumbar spine. The only thing we changed was our hip orientation. So we want that motion to come from the glutes. Now, if we found patients come up and actually arch their lumbar spine to come up, okay, again, that's moving from the spine and not from the hips. And so many patients will default to this pattern. Relax down for them. Okay. So step two is to make sure that we can actually keep rotational hip stabilization from the right muscles. So step two is going to be a little glass of hot chocolate, pretty darn hot, place right in the belly button. When you're trying to keep that glass of hot chocolate nice and still, take one leg up off the table for me. Okay, what do we feel working? Core and hamstring. Okay, so things we're looking for, I'm looking for a nice level pelvis. I'm looking for core, and I want to hear that core muscles are working. I want to hear that glutes working. And I want to hear a little bit of a hamstring. I typically like to see a nice kind of 70% glute, 30% hamstring. If we're defaulting back to the hamstring, or if a patient actually tends to cramp up, okay, we know there's an overdominance of our hamstrings and a lack of activity in the glutes. Or sometimes we'll see collapse and excessive rotation of the pelvis. Okay, so relax for a second. So it's important to think about what's happening here. Our glute can maintain rotational control of our pelvis. Our hamstring cannot. Both those muscles will extend, but I want my postural muscle, my glute max, okay, is going to be much more fatigue resistant and was able to stand much more pressure over time. So, relax down for me. If you have patients who typically default to a lumbar spine or default back to their hamstrings and have a hard time activating glute, this test actually becomes a nice teaching tool. What you'll do is actually get up on the table and you're going to push down with a pretty big amount of pressure on their pelvis. And the reasoning is they can't arch the lumbar spine into your entire body weight. There's not a single muscle in our lumbar spine that actually connects to our hips. So if I provide pressure here, go ahead and bridge up for me. Freeze right there. Okay. I've forced our patients to actually use and activate and integrate their hip control. So it's a nice teaching tool. Come on down for me. Okay. If your patients have a hard time, go ahead and engage your glute. Pretend you have a quarter of your butt cheeks. Okay. And now bridge up in that same manner. Good. And come on down. And again, Engage and back up. So this becomes a nice teaching tool to our patients. It helps them feel that proper activation. So many folks are typically just used to overactivating the lumbar spine, overactivating the hamstrings, and learning to activate the glutes properly is critical. After we have good activation and they actually sense I can use my glute, then we can pro progress on to strengthening exercises. If you take a patient with inhibition or lack of ability to tap into their glutes straight into strengthening exercises, I can guarantee you're going to default back to the old habits that we're trying to clean up. <music>